Greatest collapse in EFL history continue today at Ewa Park as Blackburn Rovers lost again, this time to Stoke City. Where's it going to end? We're going to tell you all about it next. Review looking back about the Rose's latest match and a defeat, uh, of course, at uh, Ewa Park up against Stoke City. And we'll get to that in just one second. If you're new, where you been? Smash your subscribe button, bang, all things Rovers related, Baby Rose related, Championship related. We've got it all here, boys. Under Waruski, that's right. It's another shit show, another disaster class by Tony Moby and the boys, of course, at Ewa Park as Rovers lost. 1-0 at home to Stoke City to pretty much put an end to any uh, lingering hopes uh, for Blackburn Rovers in, of course, the race for the playoffs. We'll take a look at it, all of it in a minute. Of course, people shout out to my VIPs. The other patrons, guys, you know who you are, of course. Make sure you smash your subscribe. Here I am. It's fucking snowing, guys. It's snowing. It's nearly bloody May. Give us a bloody break. Uh, but anyway, let's jump in the deep end. Of course, have a look at how we all got on, of course, with the game, of course, at Ewa Park. That's right. So here we go. 1-0 it was in the end, of course. What pisses me off right here, right now, is the, the lack of concentration from Rovers from the first second all the way through to the bitter end. This is your fucking job, guys. It's your fucking job. <coughs> Concentrate for the full 90 minutes and, of course, the chunk of change injury time. But no, four minutes on the clock, they fully uh, concede straight away. It's the same situation that happened against Blackpool. They were not switched on. They were not ready. And, of course, gave away an early goal at the start of the game. And, of course, the start of that second half against Blackpool. So, really, Rovers are their, their own downfall here. They're not switched on. They're not thinking about the game. They're not putting everything 100% into, of course, Rovers. When, of course, half of them are thinking about something else. Other guys are thinking about what's for tea. Other guys are thinking about what's on TV tonight. It really pisses me off. This is your job. We've got people paid in there. In, in the ground at Ewa Park, going in week in, week out, giving up their own days to come and watch you guys play and hopefully perform the, for the fucking badge. But you're not doing it. You're not bloody doing it. Ask for the manager. Don't get me started on him. Where's the belief? Where's the energy? Where's the encouragement, of course, from Blackburn Rovers? It's not there. It's been lost since, of course, January. It's been lost since Boxing Day. Since the cancellation of that game against Hull City, it's not been the same. And, of course, Rovers have been an absolute train wreck. And, and if, you, if we want to do a masterclass, a masterclass is a Disaster, Mowbray, get yourself a bloody, I don't know, I don't know, you could probably create a course about it, can't you, sir? You're bloody absolute train wreck, and you're on the cusps of destroying what you've built here, uh, Tony. So, shit show extraordinaire from Tony Mowbray. Anyway, let's break it down, of course, take a look at the game, of course. It was a 1 0 result. Jacob Brown within the first five minutes of the game. Uh, I think it was three minutes, 45 seconds on the clock before they uh, put the ball in the back of the net, and of course, taking away the three points. Uh, let's take a look at the possession there 52% possession for Stoke, 48% possession for Rovers. Of course, 13 shots. Rovers, but it felt like we didn't do anything. It felt like we created zero in that game. Seven for Stoke, seven uh, shots on target for Rovers, just two on Stoke, one of them in the back of the net. Goodness gracious me. They got their goal, that's all they needed. After that, there was just a defensive masterclass by Michael O'Neill's boys, just what they do. Of course, if they can get their noses in front, they get pretty much game over, game set and match, and that seems to be the way things are these days. Rovers cannot get their foot in the front of the door, and of course, when they have done, they've just not concentrated for the full 90 minutes. They've been absolute a train wreck, uh, uh, for this back back end of the season since January onwards we've been the same sort of shit we cannot find the momentum we cannot find the confidence it's been starved of us whether it's by the players or by the staffing as well who bloody knows but whatever happens it's got things have got to change and soon because we can't be uh, ending this season uh, uh, in, a, in the form that we have and then of course if anything like if we were to reward Mowbray with a new contract what does that say what does that say to the paying public what does that say to the players that that that, that acting uh, 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 not 100% or not giving 100% is acceptable by the board, by acceptable by the, the figureheads here at Ewa Park. It shouldn't be acceptable. It should be, it should be, frat. it should be uh, uh, disciplined. This, this shit, the run of form should be disciplined. And in any other fucking championship club, Premier League club, League One club, League Two club, things would be uh, 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 addressed here. Something would have, would have happened. Something would have occurred, whether a, a manager would have been fired or whether the manager bigger than that has said, you know what, shit has not worked out and what walked away. Either way, some shit needs to happen. It won't happen. Of course, it will not happen. Of course, I think I think, uh, I think Mo, the, the, the Rovers uh, hierarchy will just let shit pan out and see what happens. And of course, there is still mathematic hope that we can somehow claw our fingers in here. But ultimately, we're just not good enough. We're not good enough. Um, let's kick it on forward then, shall we? Of course, corners three to, to one in favour of Stoke. 
fouls as well. Uh, not, it's just not good enough. Let's take a look at the stats in a bit more detail, of course, uh, breaking it down uh, in, a, in, of course, both 45-minute uh, segments here. Uh, 13 shots, of course, on average for Rovers in the first half. Uh, two big chances. We did hit the woodwork. Gallagher did hit the woodwork, of course. We'll elaborate on that in a minute. Let's take a look at the first 45 then, shall we? Of course, first 45 was pretty much all Stoke. 65% possession compared to our 35. Uh, not great there uh, for Rovers. Of course, if we're trying to win a game, why, why, are we, why are we not showing up? Why are we not showing up? In games, we've seen, we've, we've seen sprinkles of it. Today, Moby says the second half was better than the first. It might have been, but to be honest with you, it was shit. It was diabolical. Even though, even the second, if, if we could just look at the second 45, I would not, I would not have got a hard on about that. I, I thought it was absolutely shit. Box, box standard football, not good enough, not exciting enough. The drive's gone. Where's the high tempo? Where's the, where's the energy? Where's the fucking midfield for crying out loud? This, it's, it's, it's starved. We look absolutely toothless. And again, if the season was to have started in January, we'd be in relegation zone right now. Of course, we could be going back down to League One. Moby, you've done a masterclass of disaster. Time to step fuck away, please. You're destroying what you've built here, and you need to get it. Uh, get, we need to fix it before it's too late. Um, this is the first half then of course three shots are overs two for Stoke uh, one on target one a piece of course there's got in the back of the net of course ours was shit as for the second half uh, we had 61% possession it was a bit more energy but why why does it take so long why does it take so long for us to fix, fix things up in that way um, 10 shots again in the second half they didn't have to try they didn't have to try they got the goal it was a good. It was. It was a breakaway opportunity. I didn't really talk about the goal. Great, great breakaway opportunity. Uh, a bit of a stake at the back, I think, from the from the defenders from Rovers and, and Kaminsky had no chance uh, in a one-on-one -on -one situation. And, and Jacob Brown slot at home for yet another goal. And yet another goal. Of course, we've been we've been scrambling to try and get some goals, but ultimately not good enough in the grand scheme of things. Uh, let's take a look at the the, uh, the starting 11s then, shall we, for, for this game. We have Kaminsky between the sticks. We have Scotty Wharton at the back, Van Heck, Daryl Lenahan at the back, of course, Travis as well. Uh, Bradley Johnson, Travis was absolutely tr uh, atrocious in the first half. I'm quite, quite surprised that he actually stayed for the full 90. Uh, we had Naomi the right, Pickering on the left, Dolan, Gallagher and Diaz up top. You probably would say that was your best attacking trio there, but not good enough. As for the, the, the substitutions we saw, Rothwell coming on, Buckley and Hedges. Diaz, I mean, Dak pulled up an injury at half time and couldn't be substituted on, so I'm not sure what's going on with there. As for the opposition, there's Stoke, of course, bottom between the sticks. We had Wilmot, Jackie Elke at the back, Howard Bellis as well, Josh, Joe Allen, uh, Tommy Smith, Josh Timmon, uh, Lewis Baker, Sawyers, Bre Jacob Brown, and Josh Major up top, of course. A, a player that was linked with Rovers in the January transfer window, or maybe even the summer transfer window, but nothing came of it in the end. There's Substitutions it included uh, whoever that fellow is, Bedace, uh, Stephen Fletcher as well. Of course, little uh, savvy little player to bring on, even though he is 35 years of age. As you can see from the old match stats here, or match races from a third party, uh, they give the man of the match two. I'm looking, I think, uh, Tommy Smith on the, on the right hand side, uh, Jock Bannum as well, 7.6 best player on the pitch for Rovers was Lewis Travers with a 7.9 I don't even know what they're thinking about that 7.7 Jacob Brown as well it's just it's a bit bonkers when you see that giving a man a match to Travers here with a 7.9 who I thought was pretty pretty shitty to be honest with you I don't know I don't know where they get their stats from for you as for the shot grid then shall we take a little look at it uh, who was the, the most prolific for Rovers it looks like Hedges had a couple of efforts uh, Travers as well we were shite uh, Gallagher did uh, have a few chances as well uh, as for Stoke it seems to be Sawyer's as well uh, Brown had quite a few chances to add to his tally but ultimately not good enough in the grand scheme of things this is the heat maps for you of course Rovers at the top uh, Stoke down the bottom of course Rovers covered a lot of blades of grass there uh, but ultimately couldn't find the back of the net absolutely shambolic stuff from Rovers in the grand scheme of things Stoke of course you know they got what they wanted and that's what I was hoping for hoping for an early goal part the bus and of course maybe a roll on to three points anyway that's a little bit of what I've had to say what about the gaffer here's Tony Moe with his thoughts and opinions about the game and more well it was a difficult first staff for us of course um, I thought they played well first half um, that second half we were in the ascendancy probably deserved a score but didn't um, and thus we get nothing from the game um, yeah it's the league it is, I think. Everybody's... Um, they're all tough games, I think. We knew how they were going to play. We knew how they function. They played two strikers. We played three at the back. You know, in hindsight, I'd, maybe you should have... Maybe should have played the, the way that we played second half from the start. It, uh, I was, if anything, a bit loyal. Loyal to the, the players who've been so amazing for us this season, really. But, um, yeah... Anyway, that's, for me, the second half performance is what the team were about and uh, and yet we didn't manage to score. Um, I'm really trying to get Dak back up to speed for this football club, really. That's why I make changes at half-time, not necessarily the performance level of the team. 
and yet Dak didn't come on a day because he got injured warming himself up at half time. Um, Rothwell's been ill, so Rothwell couldn't play. He, he just wanted to know whether he could sit on the bench because he hasn't eaten or drank and he's lost a lot of fluid over the last couple of days. But um, we asked him to sit on the bench and he made a big difference second half. Somebody could pass the ball to a blue and white shirt and, um, yeah. Although we were a lot better second half, but... Yeah, it's all about the results when you get to this stage of the season and we um, we couldn't find a way to score and just we didn't get any points. I think it wouldn't be, it'd be hard to, to, to imagine you saying that. I'm not sure. I think I know the players. I've said you for a long, long, long time about the players. I think they are punching way above their weight. I think they're a young side. I think they are, um, they are merging players in the team. I think we are missing the real creativity of the team. Um, you know... Kedra, Pervada are individuals that when you get them the ball they dance past people and they create opportunities and space in the box at this moment we don't apart from Brereton who's on his way back and yet Beza really needed to be rested today and yet we couldn't afford to he, you know, he played one 90 minutes or two 90 minutes I think in nine weeks it's a, it's a big shift, a big ask of, to ask Brereton to keep playing football but the team you know, needs goals and uh, we did that again today so um I think the league's really, really tough. I think there's lots of teams with um, much more resource than this football team's got, much more um, much more experienced footballers. If you look at them today and you look at us today, you know they had a lot of men who've been around the block, really, and they're good footballers. Um, we huffed and puffed second half and, and we couldn't, couldn't get a goal, but... Um, you know, the reality is Stoke City are wherever they are in the division and Blackburn Rovers are two points outside the playoffs and yet you know, we're all disappointed of course but um but this team that them them players out there created that expectation. We have to take it on the chin. There's no no running away from it, no hiding from it. It's um you know, we're all disappointed. All right then, folks, let's take a look at what's going on on social media then, shall we? Of course, Carl Wick says, shout out to all Rovers fans who week in, week out, turn up to watch this. Turn, in to, uh, turn it on last 20 minutes, but was too little, too late. Uh, I'm contempt with uh, losing. Brereton ch tries to do it by himself all the time. Classic Rovers claps. Hopefully, Venkies will invest the money we get. Uh, am I actually recording? Yes, I am. Lewis Hartley, we will simply won't get out of this league. And I'm over here simply becoming a burn to this club. And it's making me fall out of love with the game. Meanwhile, cheers, lads. This is Amsal Tsuki, a performance to cap off our shocking run since January. Only we could have missed this, uh, messed this up so horribly from the position we were in. Best chance in 10 years. Season over. Time to reset and figure out how to get back there ever again. Got it. Meanwhile, Barnes, Hunter Barnes says, season over. Accept to move on. Drop the out-of-contract players and play the under-23 players as we may as well lose and give youth experience. Uh, youth players experience. Trigger Diaz's uh, extension and put him up for sale. Start again at the, as the face and the uh, faith and enjoyment has been drained out of the club. Alex Lopa, uh, Lomax says, two wins in the 15 this season two wins in the last 17 last year 24th in the form table club statement please uh, meanwhile Ribley Valley UTR said we go again next week it's a massive week for this football club they're on the floor in that dressing room they're all young players so who will learn from this sack him now meanwhile four star said two wins in 15 and Fenkies and their man Sully Hall think this is acceptable Murray has been underachieving for most of his time here mighty Huddersfield and Luton showing how it's done Aaron Holt says shake his hand wish him good luck for the future changes needed for the next season to ensure survival. We are the Rovers. Mowbray, Waggett, Venus, Johnson, Benson can all go. New manager with a fresh backroom staff, please. And if those yet to sign new contracts don't want to be here, sure looks like they don't, then uh, they can all fuck off on all. Season over, lads. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's all I've got in there. Um, but anyway, let's check out what's gone on elsewhere out in the championship then, shall we? So let's take a look at the results elsewhere out in the championship then, shall we? A eight-goal thriller between Reading and Swansea. Of course, there was a draw uh, with Middlesbrough as well up against uh, uh, Sheffield United. Um, 
Meanwhile, elsewhere around the grounds, take a look at it. Of course, uh, these are the results from earlier today. Forrest, of course, kicking ass and taking names to take advantage of themselves. Luton with a big win as well uh, this weekend. Uh, elsewhere down the foot of the table, Derby are down. That's right, it's confirmed for you after their defeat today. Uh, keep your big winners as well. Uh, so uh, take from that from what you will. Blackpool with a six, uh, six goal bonanza there, uh, but at the hands of Birmingham City, of course, probably going to lose this job, isn't he? Lee Bowyer. Um, but uh, yeah, still a couple of games still to be played this match day, but of course, right here right now, Rovers uh, remain in uh, a couple of couple of points off, still three points off the six spots, uh, 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 a playoff spot. But um, realistically, have we seen anything that's going to give us any hope or optimism that we can actually get into the top six? No. There's three games left, nine points on the horizon, three points adrift of the playoffs. And of course, Deepdale uh, awaits us next coming uh, Monday. So it's a week today, give or take. And of course, like I said, Derby going down, Peebro with another win as well. Uh, Reading with a 4-4 thriller and uh, Hull uh, losing to Millwall, who of course make full advantage as they move up uh, the chains as well. Take a look at what's going on elsewhere uh, this coming weekend. Uh, they're, well, actually, the next weekend, shall we? They're, they are, there they are on the screen there for you. Uh, but ultimately, Rovers uh, are going to deep down on, uh, on Monday. Uh, all eyes on the sky cameras are there as well. Uh, so uh, yeah, we'll see. We'll see what happens for Rovers, but ultimately pretty shit stuff for Blackman Rovers today uh, and for the season. It's looking pretty grim times for Blackman Rovers. Hopefully, um, hopefully we can end the season strongly. Still nine points on the offering, but ultimately the sooner Mowbray packs his bags and, and, and says his goodbyes to the folks that he will buy. Been here five years and that is a lifetime for a manager, anybody these days in, in the EFL. Five yards is way too long uh, and of course chance for maybe somebody else to come in and of course g give us a, 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 uh, uh, something new to look forward to into 2022-2023. But that is it guys. Smash your thumbs up, smash your subscribe, check this below on Twitter, Twitch, Facebook and our Patreon. But until then boys, I'm going to be gone out of here and look forward to the game against Preston. Uh, but I think uh, local pride will be out the window. Of course, so will our three points. But until then boys, we'll see you soon. Until then, I'm out.